Man, you, you know, Lord Brunson back at you with the back at you, and I am the best reporting on the Eagles. Listen, man, we got a scapegoat alert. I, I'm I'm tired. I'm tired of this part of the NFL, man. I'm tired of the scapegoat alerts. First, let's get into some Eagles business before I talk about this travesty of a firing. Um, Howie Roseman doing his job, you know, as always, man, Howie Roseman, in my opinion, has been one of the best general managers in football for quite some time. Howie Roseman is out here scouring every inch of possible and possible positive talent to boost the Philadelphia Eagles linebacking core. He's out here doing it, man. And he found some talent in the, um, in the uh, Detroit Lions linebacking core. You know what I mean? The Detroit Lions were so good at linebacker that they were able to, you know, have a third. They were able to cut a third round guy right before, you know, um, the NFC Championship uh, game. A guy they drafted in the third round in 2022, Julian Okwara. Hopefully I'm saying it right. Uh, my, my guy Philly Mike posted on Twitter some facts about Julian. Third round pick, you know what I'm saying? Um, nine starts, I believe. Interception, sacks, everything you could get, man. Only thing I think he was missing was playing time. And, you know, he he, he kind of came around late in his career. You know, the development, you know, development has to happen. So now you got four years under his belt and he's looking to get a bigger role. The 49ers actually cut him before the NFC Championship game and brought him back to the practice squad. That's how much they think of him. You know what I mean? But the 49ers defense was exceptional this year on all three levels. And, you know, sometimes everybody can't go. You know what I mean? Everybody can't go. Everybody can't make it. It is what it is, man. But Howie Roseman was able to sign him, you know, and, and bring in some competition for this upcoming season. And, and you know it's going to be a dog fight to see who these guys are going to be but this is going to be a whole different revamped renamed linebacker core and i'm looking to see more pieces added and i'm looking to see guys fight it out to you know make this um vic fan geo defense man now let's get into the travesty <clears throat> the travesty is the firing of of damian wilkes defensive coordinator of the san francisco 49ers that is a travesty that is a monstrosity and that is scapegoating at its finest scapegoating at his finest what more do you want you know what i'm saying he wasn't jonathan gannon they didn't pay they didn't play no bend don't break thing and then ended up getting carried to the super bowl by an mvp caliber quarterback this is not the same situation you know what i mean the 49ers didn't have an mvp caliber quarterback in my opinion that defense is what carried a lot of that team this year you know what I'm saying? The San Francisco 49ers, you know, I didn't even touch on the Super Bowl or recap about it. I let them do is cry in peace. But this is going to make me really tell the truth about the San Francisco 49ers and how they blew it and how they choked. You know what I mean? Everybody talk about Jimmy Garoppolo was holding that team back. I don't recall Jimmy Garoppolo going to the Super Bowl with five with five pro bowlers. I don't recall Jimmy Garoppolo going to the Super Bowl with the best running back we've seen in the last 15 years in Christian McCaffrey. I don't recall Jimmy Garoppolo going to the Super Bowl with a primed and ready to go Debo Samuel or or, 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 or George Kittle or Brandon Ayuk. I don't recall Trent Williams being on that roster that Jimmy Garoppolo took to the Super Bowl. I just don't recall all of those things. You know what I mean? Brock Purdy had all of that laid out for him and a defense that played exceptionally well, you know what I mean, in that Super Bowl, especially in the first half. Especially in the first half. When does the head coach sometimes take some of the blame? You know what I mean? Why do certain coaches always have to be scapegoated, man, and, and into into taking the blame? You know what I mean? I, it, it it just breaks my heart because I watched that Super Bowl thinking that, damn, the San Francisco 49ers got Pat Mahomes in them number on the defensive side of the ball. They were everywhere until Greenlaw got hurt. Everywhere until Greenlaw got hurt. Kyle Shanahan never liked Wilkes from the rip, if you ask me. Anytime a head coach call a timeout because he don't like the formation you put out there on the field, then change and still lose. How is it the defensive coordinator's fault? In the Super Bowl, you challenge your defensive coordinator's decision and the personnel he put out on the field. How is that the defensive coordinator's uh, fault? They still went down there and scored on that possession and took that game over. When does Kyle Shanahan accept responsibility for the offense only getting three on the first possession of the Super Bowl? It's crazy. And then you look at, did the Philadelphia Eagles make their decision too prematurely? I know we always wanted Vic Fangio, but what Wilkes did with that defense was great, if you ask me. Wilkes, Wil Wilkes had a hell of a game. He called that hell of a game in the Super Bowl. How do you get Wilkes on the staff? Did we make our decision too soon as Philadelphia Eagles? Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not disgruntled or out on Fangio or whatever you want to call it, but you got to start to ask yourself some of these questions. Did we jump the gun and go for a popular name? Because I like what Wilkes did. I like what Wilkes did this season. They beat the dog piss out of every goddamn uh, top NFC team this year, if you ask me. I love it. 
I loved every minute of, of the San Francisco 49ers defense, especially against inferior opponents. They took it to them. Well, well, when it was time to step up, they played to the level of the competition at all times. Now, they did get crunched by the Baltimore Ravens, but hey, you win some, you lose some. But in the Super Bowl, that defense came to play. That defense came to play in the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? And, and you know, it's... it's it's just crazy, man, that they're using this dude as the scapegoat. I hope he ends up on the roster. Hell, I hope he ends up on the Philadelphia Eagles roster in some capacity. Come under, come under, you know what I'm saying? We still need a linebacker coach. And he just coached Greenlaw and, 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 and uh, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and uh, the homie, the, uh, Warner. So, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping that this can work out in our favor in somehow, some way. But, man, you know, listen, man, the 49ers, man, they blew it, man. They shifting blame. They've been crying. Debo Samuels talked all that trash, still ringless, crybabies over there. You know what I mean? 49ers Nation, Bang Bang Whiner Gang, whatever they want to call themselves, they got to answer the call. Getting to the playoffs, I commend. Getting to the Super Bowl, I commend it. We was there last year, too. We was there last year, too. But y'all got there this year as well and left empty-handed as well.